Yo, before you watch this episode, don't forget to hit the subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Peace. Okay, so I told you I'm looking forward to this. Um, I'm glad to be sitting here in, in this moment. And I'll start with my classical uh, manner. Uh, you said you prefer Shifu, so Shifu, how are you really doing? I feel myself right now being in a transition phase, hmm. being perfectly honest with you. And actually just a few days ago, uh, 10th of February in our culture was the starting of the Lunar New Year. Hmm. So that means even if I have my base in Germany, they are celebrating 31st of December, New Year. But actually for me on the inside, it just started on 10th of February. Yeah, and just looking at how like the last years, the last, yeah, the last years developed, I feel there is some transition happening and this is right now where I just also for myself get calm and really realign the path. Mm -hmm. This is what I feel is my challenge right now. But it's not that I feel bad, it's also not that I feel good, it's just that I feel something special for me is on the way. Not sure exactly what, but this is the, the great part about finding out, yeah? Hmm. So, and like this already. I grew up in the culture, now speaking about um, Europe, for example, where many things, you know, is planned. You plan your future. You make your strategies to prepare in order to become financially stable, to build up your business. Everything is planned like it would be like a, a mathematical formula where you just have to add some things and then you have the outcome. Hmm. It is one way of looking at the world and part of the, of the public exposure that meanwhile, let's say, we have with all the Shaolin teachings, I think it is definitely also thanks to all the work that has been put in by many people. But there's more than that. Mm. Sometimes I have the feeling something just comes up in your life, it's not planned. You didn't ask for it. You don't know where it comes from, but you have to deal with it. You know, so there is this type of uncertainty. And I find it more and more interesting actually that this type of uncertainty and not knowing what type of questions you're going to ask, what's going to come tomorrow, what's going to come next year, in a way this is where right now I realize just for myself, I don't always have to control something. Mm -hmm. you know, because this is like the idea, why would we like to control? Because if you have control over something, you have some type of illusionary safety, let's call it like this. I don't think we have safety because there is no guarantee if I wake up tomorrow, it's not my decision. So there is something, regardless of which culture and how you call it, there is something where it's maybe related to trust, where it's maybe related to faith, where it's maybe related to something superior. There's no question for me about it. Hmm. But I just don't want to give it a name. And yeah, so this is like, yeah, partly things that right now are, are going on in my mind, in my life. You gave me a question. If I'm, I'm with you, so we can't guarantee that me and you will be alive in the next few minutes. We know this. But does that give the permission to people to not plan in case they do wake up? Do you know what I mean? It's the opposite. So. Yeah, he said, oh, I will not plan for tomorrow or for the next month because I don't have a guarantee. 
But what if you live the next month? So should you attack it or tackle it with no plan? Mm. To answer this question, I think before we had that small conversation, you know, about one of these symbolism that very often like comes up in the Asian philosophy, which is like this yin yang symbol, okay? That that black area and that white area, mm. those double double faced fishes. And is it about having a hard structure or is it about being flexible? Is it about planning or is it about being all the time spontaneous? I think the answer lies somewhere in the balance, in the proper balance of these two. So it's not about just because I said there is no security, there is no guarantee of us waking up or not, doesn't mean that you should just like hang around, do nothing. But at the same time, it also means stop making too concrete plans and ideas how your life is supposed to look like. Yeah, because let's just imagine, we plan everything into detail. You plan it so well that actually you know already where you are going to be in 10 years. What's the point of waiting 10 years long, knowing already what's going to be the outcome. Like, you know right now already what's going to await you in 10 years. It's pointless. There is, for me, there is something missing, completely missing, that we humans, I think, are able to tap into. And this means sometimes that spontaneous things is what is adding the salt that is adding the spices into it. Mm. You know, if everything would be planned, let's put it like this, it's boring. Absolutely. Okay, so I think it is the balance, a personal balance you need to, or people need to find for themselves about. I am determined, I commit to something where I roughly, let's say, I give my life a direction, let's put it like this. I swear, Shifu, I was thinking of the same word, direction. You give a direction, but what appears along the way, walking towards the direction, this is you're open to. Hmm. So you see then, it's a, in a way a kind of combination. It's not that you like freely float around in all directions, no. You are committed, you have a goal, that one is fine. But along this way, there is still something about spontaneity, there's still something about being able to adapt, being flexible, and also to sometimes immerse yourself into something that inside of your plan just wasn't there at the point of planning. Hmm. Yeah. I usually describe it like a ship. You know what's the destination, but it doesn't have to be exactly on the route that you drew because there might be a storm, so you'll be like, ah, we need to do this. But I still know where I want to end up, but there is a hundred ways to get to it. Yes. I don't know which one I'll end up taking. I'll see. Yes. You know? So if I asked you, who are you, Shifu? <laughs> okay. Hmm. Now you really come up with a question, which is part of a question I'm asking myself currently also. What I'm definitely not, let's start like this, what I'm definitely not is what probably meanwhile the majority of humans on this planet are thinking I am, the figure on the social media who like continuously only throws out some wise stuff. It is part of what my being is capable of. It is because I have spent my time going into different practical methods based on my doing, based on the way of how I structured my life and on what I trained. Based on that, I got insights, I got a certain depth into this specific area. And 
no matter what era it is, in the moment you are spending more time than the average person looking into something, of course your understanding, your depth becomes deeper about it. And so that means when you talk about it, your perspective of explaining it is much more rich in detail. Mm. Okay? So, and I mention this because this refers to now how I was able to, let's say, speak out all the things that you, let's say, find about Shi Heng Yi on the social media. It is just coming out from me because I see these things, I, I dealt with them myself, just based on the path that I have walked a great part of my life. Mm -hmm. This is like the Shi Heng Yi. But at the same time, sometimes, I also like to ride motorcycles. So I built my own bikes. I repair them on my own. I sometimes like to watch them and I also like to ride them. And so sometimes I'm in the field of a mechanic. Sometimes I'm in the field of a racer. This can also happen. Sometimes I'm around, just right now, currently, I was traveling uh, to Southeast Asia with my brother and with my mother also together. Sometimes I'm the son. Sometimes I'm the brother. Sometimes I'm a real good friend. There are many facets. I think a human is able to express him, himself in. Mm -hmm. And therefore, who are you? All of them, all, all of what I have expressed until right now, but at the end, I don't know now, yeah, I just say, still say it, but I don't know how, how the understanding is of the audience. But I think everyone, not just me, is a whole bunch of potential. Hmm. Who are you? Potential. And it's up to you to decide right now, as long as you have in this lifetime, this body, this vehicle, in a way, it is up to your decision. How would you like to channel your potential based on the body, based on the vehicle that has been granted and gifted to you right now in this lifetime? And this is then, again, how for me, I said, it's precious. Our bodies are precious regardless of what meanwhile in, in all, the, all the world is going around, that we are all energy, yes, no doubt about it. Okay, but I still have the body. At the moment, this is what I have, this is what carries me along the road. And because I think there's a very, very close relationship between the health of mind and the health of body, that's why in this let's say, approach what I'm trying to share since many years. The message is, take good care of your body. Because this is your entrance into all the possibilities that this lifetime can offer to you. Hmm. you no, know, you can dream of climbing the, climbing the Mount Everest. Dreaming is the mind. Experiencing is when the mind merges together with the body who is starting to walk up that hill, experiencing it, mm -hmm. not just dreaming about it, thinking about it, visualizing, no, experiencing. And experience, I think this is a question of matter. It's a question of how capable is your body. Mm -hmm. yeah. If... Um Shifu, I gave you a white canvas, empty like this, and I asked you to draw your current mental state. What would you draw? I think I would draw the... Infinity? Would, yeah, the infinite eight. Mm. Why? Because at the moment, in my life, what I'm actually like working on is 
I see patterns. Hmm. I see patterns, things that always continue again and again and again, where maybe the, the ingredients maybe look different. The ingredients, so let's say the, the setup looks on the outside, on the surface, it looks different. But if you strip it down to the core of what actually is happening there, there's a pattern underlying it. Mm. Just simple, for example. My parents came as refugees from Vietnam, Laos to, to Europe in 1979. And I try to make it short, you know, if somebody has to leave his home country, go to a foreign country. Why? Because there was no perspective in the home country. At the same time, my mother was pregnant with my brother at that time. So the whole idea of why to move to another country, it's about perspective, about security. And this security and perspective for my parents was education. So that means there was always a very, very high pressure for my brother. I have one older brother about learn, develop yourself, you know. So there was a determined path what to do, mm. how to spend your time. But if I look at it right now, it's always like this. You find yourself in kindergarten. And then comes the time where you need to go to elementary school. Mm. Okay? Then you need to pass tests. If you don't pass the test, you will not pass the next, um, the next grade. Then you go to a gymnasium or to high school. Again, there's something about grading. There's something about achievement. Mm. You just finished your high school, you go to university. Again, it continues that it's not enough who you are. It's not enough what you can do right now. At the moment, it's all about spending your time to attain something more because it feels like, because you're incomplete. Apparently, the system is telling you you're incomplete the way as you are. So first of all, go to school, go to university. One university degree is not enough. Two, meanwhile. Two, maybe not even now, a PhD would even be better. So what is embedded in this whole line is always subconsciously maybe, to some person it's going to get deeper, to other people they realize it, is that structure and the pattern of you are never enough of where you are. There is always something more. Hmm. So this pattern now, I just look, for example, for me, when it comes to whatever it is like, uh, there was a time we had no mobile phones. It came out, of course, there was time we wanted to have it. We did everything, we went to work, we earned the money, you got it. You got it, it didn't last. Mm. You looked for the next thing for achieving. You look for the next trophy to get again. You got the trophy, but not enough. Mm. It's going to collect dust, you need the next one. So there I see there is a pattern. Okay? In the pattern of how to spend your lifetime running after achievements and running after trophies that at the end of the day are going to collect dust, you're going to not take them with you wherever you're going to go when you pass away. So very quickly for me I said, it's maybe part of how you can spend your lifetime, it's not fulfilling. It's, an, it's not fulfilling. Mm. And this is the moment where then maybe some people talk about spirituality, other people talk about a higher sense, a purpose. This is where then it came to me, where I started asking myself questions. What is it essentially I would like to do with this lifetime that has been given to me? And one, one thing, like very practical wise, is the reason why I'm very happy for this invitation, because one of the things I realized for myself is to wake up and invest some part of your lifetime in order to generate something that brings benefit beyond yourself. Hmm. That is something that gives me purpose. I like to wake up knowing 
this is what I'm going to do today. I'm grateful this evening going to bed knowing of having had this opportunity talking with you and sharing out the thoughts where I think people don't need to copy my life. But of everything that we are talking about, everything I'm trying to share as good as I can, just think about it if you can resonate with it. If there's something you see inside your own life, mm. what I just explained about the patterns, if you see it in your own life, rethink it. Mm. What could be the relevance of, of this understanding now? How do you put this into practice? And this is like also like a next point where, you know, where this word practice comes also into play because it's not about knowing. It's not about knowing there are patterns. It's not about knowing this is good, this is bad. It's about you know it, what you're going to do with it. Hmm. What is your human expression with the knowledge that you have just attained in this lifetime? Everybody knows smoking too much is not good. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> and this is where this practice comes in. Mm. Because it's hard, we need to practice. We cannot be, because you cannot just like jump in the ocean and then start swimming. If you've never done it before, you just, it's going to happen. You're just going to drown. So what are you going to do? Step by step, train, practice, grow in confidence, grow in skill. And what's the advantage of it? A big threat is being taken off from your life. A big threat of just like going in the ocean and drowning. Instead of drowning even, you will start to realize how nice it probably even is to simply be in the wide, wide ocean free. Hmm. There's something special about it, but only if you have the skill. Without skill, it's like deadly. You see? So that means it's not the ocean that is the danger. The danger is that you are putting yourself in situations into life without proper skills. And this is where now uh, I start to try to, to build that bridge a little bit where uh, I told you before where this Kung Fu training, this fighting training comes in. Because you see, for example, basic, do 100 push-ups. If you don't train them, you can't do it. There's no way. So the idea is, come, let's do 10 today. Let's do 15 tomorrow. Next week, we're going to be already at 25. In four weeks' time, you will have the 100. And somebody can say, I can do the 100. Okay, stop talking, do it. Show me. So about the martial arts, there is something real about it. Politics, it doesn't matter how, how good you can talk. Matters is how much real energy, real effort, real discipline have you put into your daily life in order to get to those 100 sit-ups, uh, 100 push-ups. And this is the whole idea about what is it? Skill. Hmm. You don't get skill as a present in this lifetime. You might get a talent, you might have a gift coming to this world, maybe from your parents, maybe from another source, you are gifted with something. But if you don't cultivate that gift on a regular basis, even that gift will just dissolve. And therefore skill means there is some continuity to it and there is the conscious investment of going through hardship. Hmm. Because why can't you do the 100? Because you have never forced yourself pushing through your limits. When your muscles started hurting, you already stopped. Yeah, that's why you go to the point where it's burning, you get used to the burning, and next day you continue. So there's something about 
hitting the limit and step by step overcoming it. Mm. You know? So, and this is where like this relation for me from the physical martial art practice, taking it back to how to build a proper, purposeful, fulfilling lifetime. I think it is very much related upon skill. How skillful are you walking through this lifetime? And the more skillful you are, the more beautiful, the more easy, the more playful, the more enjoyable you can walk through it. Mm. This is like the whole uh, analogy how, how I can maybe express it. Yeah. Um, when you said the, about the infinity, the answer, and then you said it's nice to be aware of repeating patterns and that we're never enough. Uh, you reminded me of a story that I read in a book that was really nice. So uh, a very rich guy was invited to a house or a mansion party. So he went to this mansion. He's already very rich, so he was invited by a friend to go to this mansion that somebody very rich owns. And uh, so his friend who brought him with him, he's like, you know, you're in the mansion of X. He has this much more than you. He has this much more than you. He has this much more than you. So the guy who's invited said, yeah, but there's one thing I have he doesn't have. And he's like, like what? He said, enough. And that is, I think, what a valuable thing. If we can feel that we are enough, I don't mean don't be ambitious. I mean, you are already a full entity, mm -hmm. but yes, you want to refine your skills. You want to become a better martial artist or a painter or a poet. Or, and that's okay. Don't mix ambition with fulfillment. You're full, but become more skillful. I think that's a nice, uh, we, we lack it. And I think we lack becoming so skillful at our choice because of the systems. This, before maybe a few hundred years, if you liked writing when you were eight, you didn't have school structures probably, so you started to write so much by the age of 14, you're probably so advanced compared to a, a current 24 year old mm -hmm. because he was distracted by uh, study biology. Also study this, also study this. So he's not practicing what he wants to. Yeah. So you're delayed so much till you're 22, you finish college. Now, maybe you can dedicate yourself to something unless you're really lucky and you started early. Okay, Shifu. Um, your childhood in three words. Structure. Hmm. Training. Introverted. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, in the, just before I mentioned, if you want to go deep in something, I think time is necessary. Time is necessary in how much you're spending with something, but at the same time, it's also your ability to observe. Hmm. And why I mention, for example, like introverted now. It's just like when in the past, in school time, you know, the, the break bell was ringing, everybody went out to the, to the break space, I was never the one spending that break time talking, you know, like chatting around or anything like this. I somehow just prefer to like, okay, maybe stand around inside the group with the others as well, but okay, listen. So like just observing, okay, what is it the people talk about? What is it that's interesting for them? So I had many, many internal conversations always. Hmm. At the same time, in the martial art practice, normally also there's never talking inside when, when the class starts. It's about you've been shown a movement, you've been shown something to practice. Go ahead, go into your corner, practice. And so that means very often talking was not part of my life. Internal questioning was a part of my life. Mm. Okay. And this is now also something to like 
jump back to the previous uh, to your previous observation about enough. Yeah. Right now, I, I was very lucky. I have a friend, like I said, he's many years already in Dubai. He likes it so much here that he moved here. So this is one of the reasons why I sometimes go and visit him. And he always like told me already that uh, he liked Atlantis very much. Yes, because mm. it's very very impressive. And so this time I had the chance also to actually see how it feels over there. And so standing there and then watching at your skyline here in Dubai, I mean, I can definitely imagine this is, these are visions, this is the view many people in this world dream about. Yeah, uh, it is the, there's something about a superlative. It's like how, how you call it. It's, it's pretty high technological advancement that you have mm. over here. But at the same time, I also witnessed quite a lot, like feeling inside the, the people. The mind sometimes, I feel, is not there. They are physically at the most, at a very beautiful place. Physically, they are there, but the mind seems absent. You know? Because apparently the mind and the body is nothing which uh, naturally is regarded as being together. And this is, I think also, is a result of why? Because sometimes of the system. Because you continuously look and search for something which is not here right now. So what does it mean? It means my body is here, but your mind is looking for something. And if you don't pay attention to this, it can just manifest and express itself in exactly such things. You find yourself actually in a place which is super beautiful, which is offering everything that you need, that, yeah, that you need, but you are not going to recognize it mm. because your mind is a step already again ahead of it. And if this type of pattern, if this type of habit and conditioning you don't realize about yourself, no, then, then how I say, I really think you're missing some essential part about living this lifetime, which is about the enjoyment of what you have. Mm. But again, so does it mean I should always enjoy just what I have at the moment without ambition? No. Again, balance. Mm. Work for things, you, you like to have, do the work in order to get it, but at the same time, observe yourself at the same time when it comes, when it enters your life. Do you still have the ability to really forget everything else and just enjoy what you have? Mm. There's something about balance there. And this is, these are like thoughts where I think it's really helpful and especially, it doesn't cost anything. This is the best part about all of these sharings and teachings, that it only depends on your perspective. Mm. And so, what is it that essentially, since many years, our mission, my mission, my, my idea is what to spread out? The only thing I do is, offering perspective. Everybody already has his or her own perspective. But the more perspective you have, the more possibilities, the more choices you have. Mm. At the end of the day, you are the one, it's your life. You decide and you take the consequences. And I'm just saying, if sometimes in this lifetime you feel sometimes it's not proceeding, I'm stuck somehow. Why? Why are you stuck? because you continuously try to move forward with the old patterns that also haven't worked the last 10 times. It's time for a new perspective. Mm. And this is where it comes into play, for example, like also in, in our culture, yeah, the, the seniors are very highly regarded, the parents, the grandparents. Why is that? Of course, they come from another generation. Yeah, but doesn't mean that their thoughts are outdated. So it's good father, mother, 
what do you think mm. about this and that? It's not that you have to do it like this, but it helps me also to understand the world from other people's perspective. Then it just widens my horizon. Mm. That's what it does. And at the end, I see, I see the situation from this angle, from that angle, from that one, from that one, from that one, from that one. So that means I see many perspectives. This is why I probably see many more solutions. And then at the end, I choose the one which I think is appropriate for what I can do and also which consequences, and they will come. Every, every decision will have a consequence. The question is, can you live with it or not? Mm. This is also like, is it good or is it bad to do this and that? I don't think about good or bad. Nothing is ultimately good and nothing is ultimately bad. Let's just say, for an example, to, to get us, uh, as an understanding, yeah? uh, let's take those two fingers. Look, this idea of yin and yang, small and big, high and low. So, those two fingers, if that one right now is considered small and this one is considered big, what I just said before, there is nothing ultimately good, there is nothing ultimately bad. Nothing is ultimately small, nothing is ultimately big, because it depends on relation. In this constellation, that one is the small one, that one is the large one. Mm. In this constellation, mm. it just shifted. So it's not right to say that <laughs> this one is always the big one. It's not true. Only in this constellation it's true. Same now goes for nothing is ultimately good, nothing is ultimately bad. Mm. It depends on in which relation to what. So. Based on this thinking, uh, thinking idea, let's call it like this, it's not useful for me to judge the world by this is good, by this is bad. So therefore, how to take decisions? Based on consequence. Hmm. Whatever you do, it's gonna bring out consequences. And you decide if you are able to live. That's it. This is the this is what you base your decision on. Is it good to do this or not? Is it bad to do this or not? I don't know. What's the consequence of this and what's the consequence of that? Which one of these two you prefer to live with in the future? Mm. That one you take. Uh, Shifu, I'm a bit similar. I, I love the idea of consulting. So you consult an elderly, you consult somebody who's younger, whatever. So you get these as close to a 360 view of what you want to do. But do you also believe sometimes consulting too much can make you more confused? Yes. This mm. at the same time is also true. That's why um, it's an individual choice. There are people who have the luck, who for themselves, they just tap into their intuition, mm. they might say, or they follow their gut feeling or they follow their heart. I don't know, different ways how people express it. Sometimes you have people like this, they never take any <laughs> advice from anybody else around them, but their life is running good. They are happy with the decisions and the outcome. Mm. Yeah, but people are different. Maybe this is a type of person, he has some type of clarity already. This is why the intuition helps. Why he can so quickly identify it and follow up upon it. But intuition is also something not everybody has it in the same amount. It's the same, let's say, like discipline. In general, I would say, like this word itself, it's helpful. It's helpful to have the ability or to have discipline in your life. I think it's helpful. In my opinion, the best would be you have a so-called self-discipline, meaning you understand when it's necessary now to stick to the plan mm. and also to realize when you are actually just about to break your plan. That's discipline. Mm. 
But sometimes people do not have this self-awareness, that self-observation. They don't see it from themselves. And this is why then the discipline must come from an external source. Your father must be there telling you, this is not how it's done. An organization, the military must be there to tell you, it's four o'clock, wake up. Because by yourself you wouldn't do it. Mm. Okay? So this is also like in terms of discipline, which one? Self-discipline or external? It depends on who. Mm. The best, or yeah, let's say, yeah, the best would be that along the path of your personal development, you are able to simply rely on yourself. That I think would be the best case. That means your growth is dependent on completely yourself. Mm. But the truth is also that sometimes you need some people that give you that additional push in order to reach the next level. Mm. You know maybe where you would like to go, but you know which door it is you have to go through, but you don't have the key. Mm. And then sometimes in lifetime, <laughs> just out of nowhere, someone pops up and you realize that might be the key for you to move up. How was your relationship with your parents growing up? Definitely from both of them loving, let's call it like this. So I had a really good, still until today, a very good relationship to father and mother. But at the same time, the, let's say, the roles of which my father, let's say, took and the role that my mother took, they were quite different. And this is actually now uh, very nice. And thank you very much for like um, addressing me with Shifu. Because just for the people to know, Shifu is like a title actually. Hmm. A title meaning teacher or father. We use it in the field of martial arts. Okay? So Shifu is like teacher or father. And if you go into a martial arts school to your Shifu, very often this Shifu make you suffer. <laughs> yeah? So in a way, um, your Shifu is not your friend. Hmm. He's not your best buddy. No, because your father's, your teacher's obligation is not to make you feel good. He's to make you grow. And this is how I see also like in, in the way how I grew up. My father, he was the one where I had like the most respect, of course, of the father. And he was the one showing me the limits. Hmm. He was the one, this you do, this you don't do. There you go, there you don't go. This is the father yeah, who showed me very clearly, which is, let's say, the direction, how much I can handle. And most of the times, these were moments they don't feel well. Yeah? In order to feel well, in order to release sometimes, this is where the mother came in. Mm. Yeah? The one that gives you the love. Yin yang. Yeah, so very clearly for me, properly, the loving part, but also the part of um, no compromise. Hmm. Learning, developing through limits. Learning, developing through some type of suffering. This is sometimes the role of a teacher. And this is where also in our culture we say, Everybody can be your teacher. Every human being can be your teacher. The ones that meet out there on the street, how can you tell? It's the one that triggers something inside of you. Hmm. Because why can they trigger? What does it mean if a strange person you meet on the street triggers something inside of you? A strange person. It just means <laughs> he has just more power about you at the moment than you yourself. So how can it be a stranger is doing it? That is the magic about finding out what is your lesson to learn. Mm -hmm. And this is like, you know, okay, what can I take out from the situation when I am triggered? 
And this is happening continuously throughout the day. You just observe yourself. Sometimes the email can be your trigger. The phone call can be your trigger. Everything can be your teacher. And it is especially the things that are triggering me and that do not consciously come from me that catch my attention meanwhile. Mm. So if my days are going too good, if I feel too good, um, it then sometimes can happen that I ask myself, um, maybe I got stuck. Maybe I just stopped growing because continuously growing, continuously developing yourself means there must be something in your week, in the months that you are facing, which is a new challenge to you. Mm -hmm. Because if you are comfortable with everything all the time, what does it mean? It means actually you're just repeating the past all the time because you are finding yourself inside the comfort zone. That's why it feels comfortable because you have witnessed it already too many times. It repeated too often. The pattern is inside already. Hmm. Breaking out, hitting the limit, this is. It's good. I think un being uncomfortable is your teacher. You can't be too comfortable. Being uncomfortable, you know you're learning something. Yes. Um, discipline was not always in Shifu. What happened to make you shift? I, I read a bit about your childhood and I know you weren't always the disciplined child, but then something happened, like there was a shift. Um, and I read something about stealing. I don't know if it's true or not. Yes, it's true. Okay. It's true. So, uh, long story short, it was just that time um, I was in the martial arts school already. There I had my Shifu, my teacher mm. father, and of course also my real father. And out of whatever great idea I had, I wanted to have something. That time I didn't have the money, so I just went into, made my strategies, how to get it. Yeah, and then just got caught stealing. Now the thing was that the detective who caught me actually was also a trainer inside the martial arts school. And f for me, it was not about that I got caught, which was the problem. I was not afraid of the police or anything like this. The, the punishing part was that that trainer could just say it to my teacher. So in a way, the fear of disappointing my father. This was the one which mm -hmm. like, um, which switched quite a lot, which made me very aware of be righteous, mm. keep the rules, okay? And yes, and when it comes now to discipline, I just don't see any alternative. I don't see an alternative uh, when it comes somehow to achieving something that you want. Very, very basically speaking, of course I was a small child who also watched television, so I saw all the idols, Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, yeah, uh, Dolph Lundgren, Jean-Claude Van Damme, doing the martial art moves, jumping around, doing the acrobatics, making cool moves, fighting around, being the superheroes, yes. so. Somehow my idols, I wanted to be like them too. So, of course, there was comparison. He can jump quite high, I can't do it. Why not? So I started. Because he spends more time jumping. So I increased the amount of how much I was jumping. Then I observed other people and saw, oh, his, his kick looked good. His punch is pretty strong. His punch is very fast. How can I do it? Mm. And the answer was always the same. It is the amount of time and dedication you put into the realization of what you want. 
And in order to do this, you need structure. You need, and having the structure set up already, then you need the discipline to keep it. Mm. Because having the structure on the plan is the one thing, then trying to put it into real life will mean you start it, yeah, and then the forces come. All type of forces come trying to prevent you from walking that path flawlessly. And this is why you need the discipline. Mm. Yeah, and there was or is just no alternative. If you want to achieve something, no matter which area it is. Hmm. Yeah. What is the strangest dream you've ever dreamt? The strangest one? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's the strangest, but I even read about it and made some research, but still haven't found really out what it means. But sometimes when I was like, it's a long time ago, but for example, it's, it's the falling without bottom. That is the one of them. Hmm. Another one is like running on the railways and just you cannot get off. And behind you all the time is that, that train, yeah? You, yeah, you know, you just have to like go to the layer, but you can't. Hmm. This, this type. Uh, but the last time these, these like dreams appeared, in one. 20, 25 years ago, but still like, if there's something about dreaming, this is what, what comes to my mind right now. And we will get an explanation in the YouTube comments for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> this can happen. Hmm. Yeah, and people also like keep telling, I mean, it's also my view that I don't always remember what I dreamed the last night. Hmm. I don't remember. But if I remember, then very often I actually find there is, some, there is some correlation to something that maybe is unprocessed in my current life. Mm. So whatever it is, it just like shows up in like a dream language, but the essence of it is like there is something unprocessed about the real life right now here, which I'm taking, let's say, into sleep because it's still unprocessed. Hmm. Yeah, so this is the way also when I realize there are continuously like dreams popping up over and over again, where I figure out, well, if it's a pleasant dream, I don't change anything about it. <laughs> Only if it's a, like a disturbing dream, then hmm. that I know at least where I try to adjust it. You know, uh, Shifu, a lot of people don't know that you have two degrees, an MBA, this different certificates, which I think is a very Asian uh, programming for all of us because <laughs> we all fall under the same umbrella. But then you chose to be a monk, a Shaolin master. Is it, by the way, is that even correct to say monk? I wanted to I check that. I prefer not to use it. Okay. Because um, there can happen quite some misconception. Yeah. Yes. In China, originally, there is the expression of there are spiritual monks mm. and there are so-called warrior monks. Warrior? Warrior monks. Okay. Yeah, so normally Shaolin is very well known for warrior monks. How do I write vo vo warrior? Like the fighter. A warrior. Warrior. Yes. Warrior monk and spiritual monk. Yes, yes. Got it. So, so that means both of them carry that monk. Title, but, but it's different. But it's very, very different. Okay. It's not comparable to, let's say, a Christian monk or a Christian priest or any type of priest mm -hmm. or monk. Yeah? That's why I, I prefer not to use the word monk mm. and just say my field is, I come from the martial arts. This is what I talk about. This is where my knowledge comes from. Mm. Yes, and I don't like to, uh, to reduce it, let's say, to a religious area. Let's call it like this. So would I say Shaolin master is correct? Yes. Yeah? That would be correct. So with all the, the, the degrees you've achieved, you ch chose to be a Shaolin master. Why? You don't choose to be a Shaolin master hmm. because master is like actually this word Shifu. Okay. You don't choose to be a, a Shifu. 
Why? Shifu is teacher or father. You cannot choose to be a father, but you automatically become one if you have children. Hmm. So when is it that you become a Shifu? It is when you have people, when you have students who want to know, hmm. who ask for guidance. Okay? This is like the one side of, it's not that you put the title of Shifu, of master on yourself and say, so now I'm going to be a master, no. First of all, you need to have people that want to know and have the knowledge that you have. This mm. is like the one side of the story. And the other part is that very practically now, there is a curriculum of, because we come from the martial arts, not everybody who that just make two years, three years, five years martial art could call himself a Shifu because there's some skill related to it. You cannot share something to no one if you don't possess it. Hmm. So that means, first of all, there's a long curriculum, a long journey of training until you get, you actually develop yourself, get to the knowledge, get to the skills, and then comes the point in time where, first of all, you have masters before telling you it's time right now. Hmm. And then all together come also people we want to learn from you. And these two things together, this is where Shifu comes from. Just mm. like as a small uh, pre-story. Mm. Now, back to like the degrees, the education. So, my parents wanted me to have all the degrees, have that financial, um, have this preparation in order to become financially stable. But I realized about myself, it is really, really hard for me to follow, to put my energy, to put my work, to put my lifetime into something that I don't find purposeful. And so, after studying, what's the alternative? Simplified, either you are in the, in the section of selling a product or you are in the area of selling a service. Okay? So, that time when I had to decide what to do, there was no product coming into my mind that I would like to sell to humanity. Mm. I don't know. And service-wise, I asked myself, what service can I offer? And the only thing that I knew the best, many years already. So when I had to decide this type of question, so which path to go, business or stay in the monastery and continue this path. I was 27 years old and by that time I already spent 23 years along this way of practicing Kung Fu training. So this is what I knew the best. Hmm. And therefore, the answer was simple. I want to spend my time sharing to the people this knowledge, that time that I attained in the 23 years, because I think the body is the entrance to everything else. Hmm. I just use the martial art. I just used the training to strengthen myself on the first place. But, and what am I going to do with the strengthened body and with the strengthened mind? I build up a strong foundation in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. This is my main purpose. It's not just about looking cool in the movements, hitting hard, punching hard. It's, an, it's a side effect. It's a side effect. The more important area is in order to be able and become skillful with the body, there is a certain mindset that goes along with it. And this mindset, translated and taken into the daily 24-hour day that I'm living, seven days a week, 30 days a month, 365 days a year, 100 years long, I think very, very realistic.
to build a strong, strong foundation like this mm -hmm. that almost seems like you are creating your life that you deserve from yourself. But it takes determination and it takes energy and it takes work and it takes strength and it takes courage. And this is, this is why I regard it is so universal this way because all of these things, courage, everybody in this world will have moments where they wished they had more from it. Mm. Strength the same. Trust the same. And this is why I regard these sharings as universal, regardless of from which culture somebody is coming from. Because culture is based on the fact of in which country have you been born into. Mm. Then comes the education based on it, the circumstance of where you grow up. This is what builds the culture that we have. So what does it mean? Culture is added. It is an added aspect to our individual life. But discipline, thankfulness, respect, gratefulness, courage, this is nothing with culture. Hmm. This is internal core of being. And this is the interesting part for me. You know, Shifu, a lot of people think martial arts are about fighting, yet it's not. It's a misconception, especially Kung Fu. Uh, maybe I said it too broad, not uh, martial arts, but I'm talking about Kung Fu more because that's what I read about. Um, they think it's about fighting, but um, it's a misconception, I, and I learned that recently. Let's say like this. It's, it, for some people, it is about fighting, which is also correct. Hmm. But with the right perspective, you can see more depths to it. There are more layers to the Kung Fu. Hmm. If you want to reduce it just to the function, so what does it bring me to spend time with it? Well, it's possible to develop some fighting abilities. So it's true. You can use it to a certain extent for your self-defense or let's say for your physical development. But this is exactly the special part now I'm trying to, to convey like to, to the world. If you look deeper into it, what makes it possible for you to develop these abilities, these fighting abilities? Hmm. And that one is the part which is now accessible actually for all of the people in the world because the, the, the matter there is the mindset, the internals that make it possible for you to, to express all different type of skills. Hmm. So it's not only about fighting, but it is also fighting very clearly. So, yeah. Would you consider yourself an optimistic person or pessimistic? Pessimistic, I would actually directly say, I don't consider myself. Sometimes maybe I see some threats. Hmm. Okay. Optimistic, maybe yes, but not dreamy. Hmm. Okay. So, I have both of it. Can we say realistically optimistic? <laughs> when you ask uh, about optimistic or pessimistic, actually I had in the mind already realistic, I wanted to say. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, both of it. Realistically optimistic okay. is a nice one, yes. That's the one I like to use. <laughs> um, do you believe people are born good? All people or some people are born evil or not so good. Okay, now um, I would like to make give you a short answer, but I don't have a short answer to this. Hmm. 
Now I tell you why. Infinite eight means there is something which is repeating. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Just like what repeats every day is like the sun goes up, the sun goes down, because the earth is turning. What repeats all the time is my inhalation, my exhalation. What repeats all the time is the up and downs of life. Nothing stays as it is. There is no success streak which stays and, and doesn't end. Mm. Somewhere will come the, the highest peak and then it will turn. Mm. And somewhere is the lowest point of the valley. It can't go more deep. There it starts to slowly uh, ascend again. There is, there is nothing which stays as it is. What now I regard as being my lifetime, having this body, I don't know what comes afterwards. The only thing, at least for me, maybe you would say it's a belief, I would say I trust it. I just can't imagine it's zero. I can't imagine that from something right now, zero, finished. Zero, nothing anymore. It's just like now why in Asia we use these pictures. Yeah? You look into the sky, you see there's the cloud. A few hours later the cloud has disappeared, but why? Because the cloud just transformed its essence into rain. Hmm. So the rain, it's raining, then suddenly the rain is gone. Where is it? It's in the ground right now, being taken by the plants. Okay? The plants taken it again, afterwards bringing out the fruits, for example. Would the fruit be there without the cloud in the first place? I don't think so. So there is something about, something appears, but therefore something else disappears. So is, there's a transformation to it. And now to come back to the question, are humans ultimately good or ultimately bad? It depends on how far does the connection trace back, which made their coming into this world right now possible. I didn't understand. Help me. I s uh, let's say like this. Uh, if we, the both of us, would look into the mirror right now, just look at the shape of our face, mm -hmm. I think, and then compare it, let's say, to a picture of our grand ancestors you would definitely see there is some similarities. Hmm. Even so, I never met them in person. They were all dead already when I was alive, many generations back. So what it means for me is that there is something which I, in the moment I was born, had in the information of my body, probably DNA, I don't know how you call it, which traces back to many, many generations in hmm. the past. So, did I have influence on how my nose looks, how my eyes look? No. So that means I was placed into this earth based on many constellations that were determined already before I become conscious of it. So now this was talking about physical body. But only having body doesn't make us human. Sometimes we say body and mind, body and soul, body and spirit. So the body we have. So where does the spirit, the soul and the mind, the essence of this come from? And there I also think it traces back dependent on from what, what, what is collected inside your soul, inside your spirit, mm. inside your essence. And this is then ultimately determining, are you good or are you bad? Mm. Th this is what I meant. So it's yeah. hard to say. Some people are maybe born with the essence of, let's say, good. good. And other people, they carry another essence, mm. a, an evil spirit. I don't know. Okay, but okay, this is like, I probably think it's very personal how you look at these things. 
But since you asked the question, yeah, I like answer. you. Here it's for your perspective. <laughs> um, you know, there's a shifu, a lot of talk, whether it's meditation, whether it's just, you know, quotes, that we need to really try to uh, be in the present. Um, not be too stuck to the past, not be too an anxious about the future. So there's regret if it's past, it's anxiety if it's future, peace, present. Okay. Is it possible, like literally possible, for a human being to be in the present? Absolutely. So let's say like this. Unless you were asking me questions, unless you were asking me questions concerning my past mm. or concerning visions right now in the future, but from my side, since I entered this room, I'm here. Mm. So my mind is not fluctuating. I don't think about what I'm going to do later, what I'm going to do tomorrow. At the moment, what matters to me is the only thing I know what is real is this conversation of you sitting opposite of me. This is like for me what matters. Hmm. So very often, this is why, yeah, these things like align your nose, align your navel, align your feet. One, two, three. Where they point, this is where your awareness is. Hmm. And so in a way, it's different facing somebody and speaking to them. They know, they know. They can, people can feel if you are with them or not with them. Mm, I believe that. Yes, and I think this is also like a type of respect of knowing our time on this earth is f finite. Let's respect. Let's give the necessary respect to the people you are spending your time with. Mm. And one way of like is expressing this is by being present, yeah? because elsewise the question is just why would you spend anywhere where you are walking if you don't really want to be there? If you think it's a waste of time to be somewhere, this is why you're drifting off, why are you there in the first place then? Hmm. Okay? So this idea of what is called as be in the here and now, be in the present moment. What does it actually express? It expresses alignment. And that's what very often I think is uh, maybe missing. Alignment. Inside of yourself you think about something, what you really want. You think about what you really want, but your words say something differently. And your actions are also again a complete other area. So you think this, you say that, and you do this. Hmm. And then it's like, okay, three areas. Where should the universe? How should, how should the power of the universe know what you want if you for yourself are already separated into three beings? But if what you carry in your heart carry in your mind, speak out and act upon it. If all these three things are together, it's super easy for the universe, or however you call, to understand this is what he or she really wants. Here it is. Hmm. Because of alignment. Because there's no doubt about it. Because it's pure. Because it's direct, because it's no disturbance, no interference. It's clear. Hmm. Yeah. And this is where I think like this power comes from. And this clarity of body, mind, thought, word, action, this you can only observe about yourself in the present moment. Hmm. And this is why I think it matters in a way. Um, if you want to be able in the best, let's say, in the best, if there is some influence you have upon your life consciously, then I think the best timing to do the adjustments is now. It's the present moment. 
if there's something to adjust about yourself, mm. to, to take your life into your hands, let's say. It can only happen now. But if somebody's watching this and they'll say, Shifu, my mind is always wandering, I can't stop, I can't focus, I'll touch my phone, I'm watching a movie, I'll still... Now there is also an article about two screens at the same time. Now everybody's watching a TV show and you're still doing this. It's become a habit. Social media is distracting, my email is distracting, my phone call, my notification screen. And they're like, Shifu, how? You're saying all of this, but how can I actually practice to be more present? Good. First of all is congratulations that the first very important step you already have achieved, which is you can see yourself. You have realized that issue about yourself. Mm. You are able to see it. You are able to identify it, that it's present. Why? If you don't see, if you don't know where the problem is located, you cannot fix it. Mm. So we know where it is. That's already number one. Then also in the way of how you expressed it exactly, there is something about habit going on. Habit meaning a continuous action which in a way always repeats over and over again. Something that repeats over and over again means there is some type of continuity or conditioning that took place. Mm. So who and what conditioned us to have these habits? Well, people have now different answers. The work, the, the society, so why is it you, you, you follow upon this trend or whatever it is? Something is conditioning you. Mm. You have been conditioned by something. By what? So find out by what? Is it your friends that you spend time around with all the time? Because they do it all the time, so you took over their habits as well. So that means number one is identifying from where are your habits coming from? And now there are two ways. Get rid of the habit. How? By replacing it with the habits you want to have. We humans are habitual beings. Meaning, what you do often, this you become. Mm -hmm. So if you want to cultivate something, let's say, let's just call it healthy right now. If you want to cultivate a more healthy lifestyle, that just means you need to do more healthy things on a regular basis. Hmm. If you want to get rid of the habit of looking in, at the phone and the screen, what does it mean? You have to reduce that type of habit. How to do it? Minimize the amount of doing exactly that. So, so this is like the, the idea. Hmm. You minimize of what you actually don't want to have in your lifetime. And you start to increase what you would like to, let's say, in, in that case, replace it with. Hmm. So, now, sometimes people can't do it by themselves. Hmm. What to do? This is why we have organizations that, or retreat centers, or things like this, workshops, seminars, these are always places where you, you, you get that support sometimes if you can't do it by yourself. It's like you said, there is the self-discipline and sometimes you need the discipline from someone else. Exactly this one. Shifu, what's um, a fear or an insecurity that you've struggled with throughout your life? I think it's, yeah, in the, in the past I always had this, I told to myself, maybe this is what I conditioned myself. I said, I think the worst thing that could happen, let's say, in this lifetime is that one day I get old, hmm. sit somewhere, look back at my life 
and say, I wasted my lifetime. This, this is like something where I would say, this is like maybe also related now to fear, if you say. So really, wasting my lifetime. Hmm. Wasting this, the possibilities that maybe have been given to me, but out of whatever reason uh, you were blind, out of whatever reasons you were distorted, and you missed it. This is something which is really like regretting. So, and therefore, um, therefore, very carefully, I started to ask myself how to avoid or yeah, how to minimize like the, the, the risk that this day could come like this. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I became very, very aware and very, let's say, careful also where I spent my energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yes. On the one side, yeah, for example, because of like this public exposure on the one side, the, possi the, the possibilities increased tremendously, but at the same time also internally for me, the, the selection of what of this to do, in which to invest my time in, has become the selection stage has become more, I, I have more quality checks now, mm. you know, before I, de I decide which one. The buffet is too big now. Kind of, yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, how is your relationship with money? I usually don't talk about it, mm. okay? But I see money as one type of transfer of, let's call it, energy or lifetime. Let's put it like this. Mm, yeah. There are, for example, now since three years, I launched, for example, um, an online program. But before that, for many, many years, I shared out like for five, six years, and it's still available right now, completely free content. Mm. But the stage for me of thinking is like this. If you just want to get informed, if you just want to inform yourself about something, go on YouTube and just put in your search, what you're interested in, put in Kung Fu. Boom, everything shows up about Kung Fu. Mm all the different styles that existing. So. Now what you are touching right now over here is the surface of what's existing. But the surface is not going to make you good. Hmm. So what is the next step that you, that actually you would need to go through? Out of the complete selection, start actually to become dedicated. Because you cannot have everything you must start somehow with a structure. So this is now where I had all these videos still like completely free, um, where, but at least along one, one line. So structured, but along one line. Mm. The only problem is because it's free, you don't appreciate it. Mm. Yeah, so that means you, you wake up, and, oh, yes, today I'm in the mood, okay, let's put on the video, and then tomorrow, because you have the muscle ache, say, oh, no, come on, I did the training yesterday, let's skip it today. So what you have is, I offered you a structure completely for free, but what is not there is dedication and commitment. Mm -hmm. So, and I am absolutely, from this type of thinking, that the exchange must be in a proper way. In the way that if you had to work one month long, let's just say, in order to afford something, automatically there is some value that you put towards it. Mm. If somebody gives you the same thing but just throws it at you, you did nothing for it. Well, I just think this one is just going to land somewhere and also going to collect dust. So very, very important is the proper exchange of 
you can't get it for free and you cannot also like uh, have it let's say too expensive hmm. it must be the proper exchange it must feel well from both sides then the highest development can take place hmm. okay. so and this is where i think money comes in because also now when we come to meanwhile coaches hmm. personal training any anything like this why do they charge money for the lessons that they are giving yeah but what is always overseen is how does or how did the coach in the first place get to all this knowledge hmm. how much of his lifetime did he invested traveling the world to get to the knowledge investing into his education and therefore i think it's absolutely legit if somebody with skill offering his service to also in return receive something and for many cases the way the the matter of how this exchange is taking place nowadays in our world is done through money the alternative is also which is existing you cannot pay money no problem come here you work for me you invest your lifetime you mm. invest part of your lifetime of your energy this is the real energy lifetime this is what it is mm. money has already been exchanged how yeah because you maybe if you are employed by someone you gave your lifetime to the employer and that's why he gave you money back you already exchanged mm. this is already the first step of the money exchange and now with this money you now continue to reinvest it in whatever you think you need in your lifetime and that's the most expensive currency time yes absolutely so how you know first one point on the money thing it's because also we're really brought up with this negative sometimes education about money especially asian and arab families like oh it's the root of all evil don't speak about it on the dinner table etc so we start to have this negative feeling towards monetary things but also if we look at it as the resource that can make me do more good so if you can make enough funding to clean your uh, monastery your to polish your um, social media to polish your courses you can do your purpose much more times a thousand but if you have no and half of your staff is hungry and the other half are like hey i don't even know how to register to you i don't even know how to reach you so you see it's um, in arabic i can't think of the word but it's the means it's the means to your goal yes and if people start to there was once i talked on instagram how it's funny if i say i went to uh, a, a trainer and he charged me 200 dollars for an hour everybody like what oh my god you're so stupid why did you spend so much money blah 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 and if i say well i spent 200 dollars on this wallet from this brand they're like ah oh, nice that's not that's a bargain <laughs> and you're like look at the how we see things okay the wallet is because of whatever leather it still doesn't add value to me as a human i don't become smarter nothing health you are being miser on health or education but you're being very generous towards materialistic things that don't do anything for you if you want something to just keep your money in i can give you a plastic bag and you put it and probably will do the same function so i think the whole world has to shift its mind to, okay how am i using this to invest in my brain in my health and that's where i should be very generous because i'm investing i'm not spending mm -hmm. i would love to change that more oh uh, just while you were talking right now hmm um now it's gone again maybe sorry let it come back when it comes <laughs> back 
Okay, so my next question was, how is your relationship with food? Food. Hmm. My personal preference is, I'm normally eating meat reduced. What? I'm not meat, what? meat, meat. Meat reduced? meat reduced? What does that mean? Not every day. Okay. Not every day, but I don't consider myself like only being vegetarian, and not vegan or anything like this. Number one is, I feel what my body needs. Hmm. And when sometimes I have my training phases where I'm trying to build something up about me, when I have a lot of energy output, then it only means I have to look at my diet more precisely and see from, from which, what do I need more. Okay? If I'm sweating a lot, I adapt my diet in such a way that I have many fruits, many vegetables that I feel like are hydrating to me. Mm. So I cannot say what is the ultimate food everybody should be eating. I don't know. I think it's dependent on your lifestyle and also on the level of performance you are asking from the body. Yeah. And how is your relationship with love? Love. Mm. Which type of love? All of them, you tell me. I know about family, you said you're very close to your mom and God rest your dad, his soul. Um, and you have a brother, so we know, and I, you said it's a healthy one. And I don't know, because you said you're a warrior monk, not a spiritual monk. So I don't know if, from what I know, spiritual monks are not supposed to get married or have children. I don't know about warrior monks. Is it the same? No, it's not the same. In this case, it would not be the same. So you're free to get married if you want. Yes. Okay. The warrior monks, theoretically. Correct. As long as they are finding themselves in the temple, hmm. they of course do not have a relationship, but normally they do not carry the same amount of vows that normally a spiritual monk would have. Okay. You know, like this is like the, the first part of the story. Hmm. But anyway, this is the way how Shaolin is being, let's say, uh, set up in China. Me, I come from Europe. Mm. I come from Germany, yeah? so there anyway is different. Okay. So, but I don't have a relationship currently, but when it comes to the word love, I have the following thoughts about it. I think first of all, like the definition of the word uh, must be made a little bit more clear. When I talk about love or it comes into my mind, it is something which must be ultimately inclusive. Hmm. So this type of love, the word love, when I relate it to, it has no boundaries. It is including everyone and everything. The type of love sometimes we talk about between a male and a female or a partnership, in my terminology, I wouldn't call it love. Hmm. Why? Because it is exclusive. In the moment there is love between your, your wife and yourself, the complete rest of humanity is excluded. Hmm. Because it's the love between the two of you. It's, yeah? So in the moment you are loving someone, this type of love, everybody else is uh, excluded. But in my understanding, the love that sometimes in, let's say, in Buddhist teachings or in the traditional ancient teachings are mentioned, this type of love sometimes, it has no boundaries. It goes towards all beings, hmm. expressing in a way a connection in the easiest ways like this. You understand, you feel and you experience that we all everyone and everything ultimately comes from the same source. We look differently, we come from the same source. Mm. The one who allowed you to live is the one who allowed me to live. 
Yes. So sometimes maybe we can say, so therefore we are brothers. Mm. Mm, yeah. Not biological wise, but from another area seen, we are brothers and sisters in a way. So what does it mean? Actually, even if we're not from the same blood, but actually I still don't want you to suffer in this world. Mm. And actually even that animal, let's say like this, it's another being, it's another species, doesn't speak my language, but the one who allowed that animal to be alive, I think is the same one who allowed us to be alive. Mm. And so there again, then I can understand, I have some type of connection that actually I also don't like that animal there to suffer. Mm. Yeah? So, and so that there is something, this is for me, what is like this love, mm. this ultimate love of life, because there's nothing higher than that. That is the one side of love. And the other side, you might call it, it's a romantic love, it's a, it's a partnership, it's a affection, I don't know. Yeah, it, I think it's like defi just definition, a question of definition. Hmm. But, yeah, it's important. It's also important. It's important. And do you, Out of question. like, are you open to a partnership in your future? Are you open to having children that take your teachings, for example? So, thank you for coming up with that question now. But it's the right question at the right time. There is something where I'm resonating very strongly with numbers. Hmm. Yeah. Now, for example, in, in the culture, in the tradition where I come from, the number nine, the number 18, 36, 72, hmm. 108, they are sometimes in our culture regarded as holy numbers or special numbers. Because, why? The 9 is okay, 18, 1 plus 8, hmm. 36, 3 plus 6, 72, 7 plus 2, hmm. 108, 1 plus 0 plus 8. So, there's something about the 9. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. I started with the age of 4 to go actually this way of what ultimately brought up Xi Heng Yi. Okay, what people see now there, Xi Yang Yi, okay, it's like a 36 year construction, 36 years long. I trained, I developed, I studied, and so this year right now, like I said, it was 36, so it's a nice number to, mm. for me to close something mm. and probably realign and readjust my direction because I feel also sometimes like you know, if you like pull the bow you pull it too much it's gonna rip and these were like thoughts like in the last two years three years already coming more often and more often where I felt like this idea of the exposure becomes so big more and more people start asking me about I don't know, workshops and seminars and engagement here and engagement there. I see the possibilities, but two things that come up for me was, it's not good to exaggerate it, because elsewise you're going to just rip the bow. And the other thing was also that I didn't see, and I don't see a purpose, a sense anymore, of, of higher, more, bigger, larger. Mm. Yeah? And so therefore I started to slow down this area. Also meaning that the majority of the past 36 years, I was very strongly, strongly, I would say committed, and disciplined of walking this way, of trying to express myself in the best way possible what this Shaolin did for my life. Mm. That's why I find it so good to then share it also out to the world. 
because I am the best example. I'm the best example. What is it that I'm sharing out with the people? It is what made it for me be possible to achieve, if you look in terms of achievement, what I have achieved today and what I'm representing today. Mm. So, to just bring out some potential. If there is some potential inside of you and you want to know some guidelines, some ways, some ideas, how can I better channel it? How can I make use of the potential that I have? I think one way is of the things that I'm trying to share with you because this is what I see. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, you can't have everything in this world. So if you commit to one, to, if you commit to one direction, sometimes it's not possible to at the same time be exactly as committed to another direction. Mm -hmm. Times are changing, the universe is changing, ideas are changing, preferences are changing, everything is changing. Humans are changing, I am changing. And so, of course, it came up to my mind after having so many years of this dedication, maybe there's an alternative. What, what would I be if from one day to another I would not be Xi Yi? From one day to another, everything on the social media about Xi Yi disappears. You Google me, you can't find me. Who would I be then? tomorrow when I wake up. Nobody knows me anymore. And I just said, I think I'm still going to be there. The name is just not Shi Yi. But I think that for myself, I find something about me along this way that finally, in a way, I'm also actually able to get rid of the surface. Mm. It's not important. You can't take anything away from me anymore. Yeah. And this is where, in a way, I start to also feel free. More and more, I start to feel even more free than before. Because, you know, in the beginning, I started sharing out because I wanted, in a way, to, to bring good to the world, share out knowledge which I think is uh, helpful. But then I also realized somewhere, hmm, feels like sometimes that I have be become dependent, actually, on the community to fulfill the expectations of the community. Hmm. But that was not the initial idea, to fulfill anybody's expectations. In the first place it was, I just shared what I have. But just then the community started growing and I felt the eyes watching. Hmm. I felt the expectations looking at me. Which put me in a way also like in a prison again. Where I felt like, no, that might be, this is maybe the point where sometimes um, fame, reputation, status uh, can corrupt you, mm -hmm. can eat you, where you're starting to lose the initial purpose because you are starting to actually become the slave of your community. And there I say, no, no way. I had to realize it for myself to start changing it. And all of this I'm processing right now. You asked me right in the beginning how I feel. This is what I feel. Mm. There is some transitioning going on also inside of me. But I'm happy about it. Because the worst thing that can happen is stagnation. Stagnation and regret. Mm. And I consider myself in a way being lucky of walking this path inside the field of martial arts, which also in a way made uh, me mentally quite stable, 
physically also quite stable, meaning I can take some pain, I can take some beating, mm. and so that means there's not too much fear about it. Mm. And so I'm actually more or less just preparing to get more and more to the unknown. I have no concrete idea where it's going to lead. But I just, it just really came to recently to my life that stopped the planning. I planned the, the first half of my lifetime, the first 40 years was full of planning, was full of ideas that I try to put into the world where I think I have to put something into the world. No, it's about balance. Now maybe it's time where I don't do the planning. I wait. So what's your answer? Are you open to it or not? <laughs> <laughs> like, is this a nice idea in your mind or you're like, no, not for me? You know? Everything's possible. So open. Open. I like that. Yeah, you never know, Shifu, really. You never know. And sometimes love or a special person just slaps you out of nowhere, you know? And that's the beauty of, you know, like you said, you give, you give life some space to play. And you see what that takes you. And I like that you're going through transformation. And I do believe the 40s are weird. I'm 42 now. <laughs> and it's like, so there's something. I was, I loved the 30s. The 30s were cool, like. 32, it was a new chapter, I had to get a divorce, I have two beautiful boys, I changed my jobs, and there was a shift. But the 40s are weird, and I don't, know if, I don't mean it in a good or a bad way, but it's like the first time I see, I feel I look young, but other <laughs> people look old, and the child that used to be a really child, now he's taller than me, it's because you spent enough time on earth, you're lucky that you've already spent 40 here, and you start seeing the guys who were with you in grade school, but they're maybe fat or much older, but you took care of yourself. You're like, oh my God, we're the same age, but what happened there? Why did what life hit him hard? What happened? And I don't know. There's something strange about it. You'll know. You're just, you're 14 soon, right? Yes. Yeah. We'll talk. We'll talk there. 41 soon, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Do you. In your, because you have you come from a very disciplined art. Do you believe uh, emotions uh, and maybe sex drive or love are weaknesses? I think there should be nothing. inside a human's mind that is able to drive you if you don't consciously want it. Doesn't matter what it is. Hmm. No matter what, like, what type of drive it is, no matter if it is an addiction, no matter what, if it's your, your partner even, to be driven by something simply means the life is not in your hands in that moment. Mm. Yeah. But in order to be able to get the full potential out from you, it should be in your hands. That's the whole point about it. The whole point about why training, why disciplining, is in order to get the full power and potential into your own hands. Mm. So you are the one who consciously actually wants to build your life. I don't want to outsource it. Mm. And therefore, I also don't want that my life is being driven by anything else except by my conscious decision. So, therefore, is it a weakness? when you are being driven by it, I would consider it like this. Mm. But 
Why is it there in the first place? Well, maybe to exactly display to you where your limitation is right now. Hmm. What are the areas for you with the highest possibility for breakthrough? I know that you also speak a lot about mastery. How does someone reach mastery? In our culture, yes, like I told you, we have Shifu, which is teacher, father. Hmm. So it's always like, so where's the Shifu? He's there. Where's the master? There he walks. So like when it comes to this type master, always like it's always somebody else is never you. This is, this is not how I see it. Hmm. This is the reason why somewhere along the line, I liked to use this word, the purpose of what I'm doing. What is it I'm sharing out? It's a way to self-mastery. Mm. I don't need to be your master. You don't need to call me master. Look in the mirror and there you see the master. This is what I would like to, to share to the people. Who is the master? The one that is able to orchestrate and build up the life you really want to have, a, you want to have, hmm. not for somebody else. So it's like, who is the master? It is the one who is hidden inside of everyone and each one. It's the best version that you can bring out about yourself. If you don't cultivate it, the master will not come out from you. Hmm. It is you yourself who needs to do the work. You do the work with the right methods and that master will come out. You are going to be your own master. You don't need to live the life for anybody else. Live it to the fullest possibilities of what you are capable of. And this is what I just expressed as, that's what I call self-mastery. Hmm. Yes, full responsibility about your own life. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Shifu, do you believe whatever you think of expands? Okay. Mm. Expense means for you ultimately what? It gets real or? It could. There is a lot of these quotes that, you know, what you allow your mind to think of expands or starts to become. If you're like, ah, oh, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, you'll be depressed. Mm -hmm. If you okay. think, ah, oh, this project will fail or uh, I'm never going to do it, uh, it might materialize to becoming true. Okay. So, mm, materialize or let's say manifest. Manifest, okay. Okay. I think there is a correlation. I think there is a connection, absolutely. Hmm. Um, you know, before, maybe it's new to the audience, that's why I'm, I'm trying to still explain it a little bit. When you dive into the ancient teachings, or also you look right now, meanwhile, in all the, all the social media that is existing, there is simply this term of energy. Hmm. Okay? Energy by nature, okay, you cannot see it. No, I cannot show you pure energy, I don't know how it looks. But once energy starts to focus or concentrate itself in certain amounts, things start to take form. Hmm. Okay? So that means everything that has a form, everything that starts manifesting is a type of condensed locked energy. Hmm. How does the energy get locked? How does the energy condense? Now, there it is maybe useful to know that there is that saying, energy follows intention. Yes. Or thoughts. This is where the energy goes. What you think about, this is the nourishment of the energy. Hmm. So you continuously place your intention in some direction. Your thought 
in some direction. Mm. From this, what I just explained before, it's absolutely possible that this is the reason why things suddenly start to manifest and pop up visibly in your life. Because it's a lot of thinking power that went into there, which time over time started collecting, condensing so much energy, so much lifetime of yours, that it comes. So, mm. yes, in, in which direction can you now use this understanding? This ultimate creativity of the mind, this ultimate possibility of, our, of us humans being able to create something with the mind that at the moment actually doesn't even exist yet. So, what I mean is, there was a time we had no airplanes. How does the airplane come to this earth? How did the engineers knew how to build it? Somebody must have seen something in the mind before even it was built. Somebody must have seen the possibilities of how to build this country before it has been built. So everything starts here. Mm. You can use it to, as a driver for inventions, for technological advancements that at the end are going to serve humanity. Or you are going to use the crea creative power to start creating all types of threats, horror scenarios, and conflicts that are also possible to come. Mm -hmm. So, and this is like now the, the question, for what are you going to use the power of the mind? So my follow-up question is, if somebody says, Shifu, how do I manage all my negative thoughts? How do I control it? You know, it's a very big question today in the world, especially with the generation coming up. And it, it, there is no mastery of the mind. It's very difficult. The brain is also very mm, powerful. Like it could bring thoughts to you that you can't say, ah, I don't want this channel, I want this channel. So when they're having, they're on a negative channel or a horror channel or anxiety or fear, there's a shifu, how can I control that? Number, or let's say, one way, somewhere close to you. You have somebody who sees what is going on with you. Hmm. I can see in which state of the mind somebody maybe is. And because my state of mind is somewhere else and not caught in negativity, this is why, if there is a connection between you and me or whoever, it's good to have people, to have friends, to have family that can pull you out of the hole. Hmm. One possibility. Hmm. Yeah? But, of course, these must be people who are not in the same state of the one that needs to come out. So this is where sometimes also, like, you talk about people in a low frequency field and people in a higher frequency field. You need to be in a higher frequency to pull the lower one up. Mm. So this is like one way. Other ways you don't have maybe somebody who is able to pull you with. Um, which means you maybe need to help yourself which again has then to do with step by step. You need to build yourself up and it's not going to be easy. It's just not going to be easy. And this is again where it comes in. How much struggle and how much suffering actually are you willing to take in your life? This is also a really, really big question. 
Like, you know, on the one side, you can make your ideas about what you would like to have, where you would like to be. This is the one side. So your focus is on what you would like to have, where you would like to be. Mm. The other question is, what are you willing to sacrifice through how many different pains, conflicts, challenges are you willing to go through? Because there is something that goes hand in hand. It's like that story afterwards when you're going to listen to it. Uh, sometimes I talk about like walking up the mountain. Hmm. Uh, walking to the peak is not going to get more easy. The higher the altitude, the more difficult it becomes. The challenges are not going to get easier the higher you reach. So this is also like an indication that yeah, it, it fits in so many different ways, like also when it comes to the haters, especially in the field of social media. The more exposure, the more haters. The more suddenly it feels like they might affect you. Mm. Until you realize it's natural. It's natural. Because you're getting higher. Yeah? So this, these are like, um, let's say now, just images, pictures, but they can support. Mm. So now, and when it comes to this negativity, yeah, at the moment, I'm really, I'm really not a specialist in now, let's say, in, in psychotherapy or anything like this. But I just see two ways. Either you find the right methods, merge together with your own effort to do something about it, mm -hmm. which is the hard way, or you're lucky enough to have friends, a surrounding, a family, who at least for the beginning can give you that additional support for you to, to keep moving. Hmm. Yes. But then also, again, the question is same like with the habits of watching at the phone. Why are you negative at the moment? It's the consequence. Look at the past weeks, look at the past months, hmm. look at the past life. Who are your friends? Hmm. In with, with what have you spent time in? What did you do? Oh, this is like in Asia sometimes when people start to maybe get into this area. There is something what we call cause and effect. Like apple seed leads to apple tree, orange seed leads to orange tree. If you, you know, so it doesn't happen that you plant an apple seed and you get an orange tree. It doesn't happen. Hmm. So that also means right now you are so negative. Right now you're caught in the trap. What is it that brought you in there? Hmm. So what you're looking at right now is the effect is you're negative. What are the causes that brought this negativity? So, and that also again makes you already a little bit more wise, knowing where maybe to start the adjustment with the causes. Start removing step by step the causes that ultimately were leading to your depression, to your negativity, to your attitude that you have right now. You know, so this, this is where it comes from. The person you are right now is like the summary of the past actions. Who are you going to be in the future? Everything you do from this moment on. That's the future. I love this. I love the fact that, you know, if you just scan what did I do in the last few months? Who did I hang out with? What were my bad habits? Oh, I stopped playing sports. Mm. Oh, I started to change my friends. Ah, you know, or I'm in a job that I don't enjoy. Mm. And that's such a good scan because you're, you shouldn't look at the symptom. You should look at maybe the causes. And we're sometimes too consumed with the current state, not thinking what's the root of the what brought me even here? Okay, I'm here. Clue. Cool, we get it. How? Yes. And maybe we don't always have the answers, that's why maybe you need to do trial and error. Oh, I'm gonna change this, uh, maybe also this. Ah, now I feel better. 
Yeah, yeah actually, and this is the reason why maybe you heard about traditional Chinese medicine. Mm. It is like with the acupuncture, acupressure, using the meridians. Why actually this TCM sometimes is also called, it's a quite holistic approach. Holistic because if you have a headache and you go to Germany, I make it now super simple, they just give you like the aspirin. Mm. So what they are giving you is just the symptom is gone. The root is still there. And this is like the difference where it also fits very well, like to the philosophy, if you would call it like this, or to the approach that, let's say, we are trying to say, the symptoms are the symptoms. Why did they come? Mm. Go to the root of everything. And there, at least this is like the approach, like, um, I would say, at least as an additional perspective, it's nice to have it. You can use the Western medicine and you can use the Eastern medicine, perfect. If you have both possibilities, chances for healing are higher. That's it. Hypothetically, <laughs> if you could have dinner, Shifu, with three people from any time, dead or alive, who would that you have dinner with? You have three chairs. If I would have more time, yeah, I would probably come up with other names. But just right now, I don't know why. Don't ask me. But definitely right now, one of them would be Genghis Khan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard, yeah. Mm. The other two. Probably Van Gogh. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm in a completely different area, but okay, it just came up. And third one. I, I don't know. <laughs> Could be anybody. You have one vacancy. Let's take a musician. Hmm. Let's take Beethoven. Nice. Hmm. You know what? Now Genghis Khan is, is might be because of his, let's say, his ability of mobilizing forces, not just the forces of himself, just mobilizing forces. Hmm. This is like, just like to, to witness what type of character this is one of the reasons. And the other two is most probably because I consider them as artists. Mm. And there is something about artists. And that's just like the interesting part. Yeah? It is. So, yeah, but like I said, if I would have more time, probably I'd come up with... We'll give you another table and more strange time. things, yeah. <laughs> what is the most important lesson to teach a child? There are many, one of them, which maybe in many ways can be expressed, but in essence, I think, do not ever allow anyone and anything put you in a conceptual box. Hmm. There is no, you must become this or you must become that. You can become everything as long as the mind is free and it's not preoccupied with any ideas of the parents, of the government, of the society, of the advertising, of the propaganda, of anything like this. The free spirit. Hmm. Whatever keeps the free spirit alive. This is, I think, is, it, it would change the way how you would educate your child Hmm. It would change the way of where you would, let's say, maybe place your, in which circumstances 
you would place your child. Yeah, because there are just there are just institutions and systems existing in this world right now. They are not made to make you bigger. Absolutely. They are made to keep you small. They are not made for you. They don't want you to free think. Because free thinking meaning you could possibly tap into the idea that there's a huge potential about you. No, it's not wanted. Hmm. And so, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Hypothetically, if I have a letter with your date of death and I gave you the envelope, would you open it or no? I'm a curious person, you know. <laughs> that makes it really difficult. On the one side, I'm a curious person. On the other side, I trust in what I share. And why sometimes... Sometimes the doctors give you three months to live. How do they know? I think it's a huge, it's a huge, that the reason is that because a doctor maybe has some type of hierarchy or position that you are accepting, when then you receive a message exactly from this higher institution, that's why maybe you take the saying too serious. Mm. And what happens is you start to believe what is standing there. So what is it? You're nourishing, you're nourishing the manifestation of what you think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, because it's all based on the power of thought, give me that letter, I'm going to look at it and I'm going to change it. <laughs> you know, I really find it offensive when doctors do that. I find it, it's a disservice to that person because at least 50%, if not 70 or 80% of the times I've heard that, it never happened like they said. So I'm like, your track record is quite crap. Why are you still saying that, you know? There's no evidence to it. And I, I, I've read of a study where they kept telling the person when he's supposed to die, his brain actually shut down. He was healthy, but his brain thought, ah, I'm supposed to die. It was so powerful that it shut down the heart. So how is that? It's not a nice thing to do. Just let it be. Let the soul go when it's supposed to go. Or you can easily tell the, you have a very critical illness. Uh, you, uh, you'll be very lucky if you go through this and we wish you all the best. You don't need to say two months, two weeks. Oh, you go scare the family, you scare him. You can say it's in our records, it's short, but a lot of people beat our records. You know, mm -hmm. it's cool. Much better, I think. Um, what do I have next for you? Ah, card game. This is, I'm gonna, because you're a curious person, I'm gonna give you one. <laughs> so you can play it with the guys. Okay, so this is a game. I want you to just to shuffle and we'll see what's the first one that I'll ask you. Only one. Only one, yeah? I'll ask one, yeah, yeah. Just to change the vibe. I'll take the first one. Actually, no, so let's do it different. You do this and I'll choose one. Okay, let's see your fate. <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you the question and then you throw this and it's how you answer it. Of the people in this room, who do you want to trade lives with? <laughs> trade life. Trade lives. You can throw this. A story. So, camera one, camera two, sound engineer, director, or me? Let's put it like very easy. I mean, since we started talking, I already have the feeling you're quite 
you're quite well established and also have some depth into the way of your being. Mm. So therefore, easy way to change with you. Okay. Thank you. Next question. Um, what is... Thank you. What is the happiest moment you've been through that you can remember? I'm not necessarily looking for happiness in this life. So I'm just, just like to mention it right in the beginning. So my search is not necessarily for happiness. Mm -hmm. But when certain conditions are being met, I think happiness is the natural result of it. So, like what? Like really arriving in the moment. Mm -hmm. So I had... I told you I was just now currently in Southeast Asia, in Thailand, because I had a workshop there. And the very first time when I traveled to Thailand, I had like this, uh, this is still in my memory. You know, first of all, Thailand, actually sometimes also called Freeland. I didn't know that. Freeland. Mm. So why? Yeah? So simple, out of the fact you arrive there at the airport, you just go into almost whatever city, rent a scooter. Sometimes just don't even need to wear a helmet and just go. Mm. Feels really free on the one side. So I like to ride motorcycle, I like to ride scooter. And so there was one time when I was riding like a mountain road, really like this, a mountain road, like a four hour drive. And on top of that mountain, there was a coffee. And I also like to drink coffee from time to time. Mm. So after riding the bike there, looking forward to have like the first coffee at half of the, half of the journey, and then I was standing there at this terrace, at the coffee, in the middle of the jungle. So standing there with a the coffee cup, looking down at the valley, which is the jungle, and seeing like the monkeys jumping around there, that for me was such a moment, uh, yeah, I remember where something, I don't know, something shifted a little bit. Where I would really say, that was the time I felt again how I arrived. Like there was nothing like to want in that moment. Mm -hmm. It was like the realization in a way. <laughs> yeah, and then, this, and then that, that internal smile comes out. It's like the heart starts to laugh from inside. It's like it fills you up like it feels really joyful. These are like moments that sometimes pop up over and over again. Mm. And what all of them I think have in common is there is something about arriving. Arriving in the moment. The past, you don't know the past is there the future, there are no thoughts about the future. You just arrive. You just arrive and realize, what if that's it? There's no wanting anymore. It's full already. Hmm. The fullness has entered your perception. You have realized it's full right now already. And so this is a very, very special feeling that I don't know if I would like call it happiness, but it is a very, very fulfilling moment. So mm. these moments of fullness, of being fulfilled, sometimes you can have them, um, I don't, it, it sounds maybe negative, I don't mean it negative, but sometimes these moments you have in a partnership when it's really, really fulfilling. Mm. The only problem is you have that moment, but it's based on a condition. It's outsourced to your partner. So mm. with the partner, you have it. Without the partner, it's gone. Mm. 
Mm. So that again, it means something outsourced. Mm. So therefore, it's nice to, to be able to have this type of relationship, but it would be even better if you find the answer to that state of being by yourself completely. And then whoever accompanies you, it doesn't matter. Hmm. <laughs> I like that. What about Shifu, the most painful thing you went through? Always related to loss. Hmm. Loss of a person, loss of an idea that you somehow had to really realize in this lifetime it's not going to turn out this idea, it's not going to work how you planned it, how you imagined it, no matter how much work you have put into it. So, uh, about loss. Hmm. So, and the thing is that I can't necessarily now, now really say but what was more painful, the loss of this idea or the loss of, uh, of your pet or the loss of your family member, which was the most painful one? Mm. You know, for me, the pain that comes from loss, it's always the same. The reasons can be different, the triggers can be different, mm. but you are angry, you are angry. You have pain because you lost something, it's still the same pain. And we're not talking about you lost your key. But losing something that meant something to you. Hmm. This can be an idea, this can be a being, it doesn't matter what. But this type of pain, I think, is like... Um, I would say it's for the majority... Maybe I'm wrong, but I, that's what I think. Um, everybody will face it. There's no way around it. How did you deal with the loss of your father? Now, there's an interesting cultural aspect, for example. My father was already lying in that... Uh, so he passed away because of cancer. And when the hospital also already knows that now it's not so long anymore, they put him in the so-called... Uh, how is the name of it? At a special station in German it's called like palliative or it's the station like preparing really for the people to go. Mm. So I knew when I'm going to go there it's not going to take long. Mm. And my father said that when the time has come and he will pass away, he doesn't want that any of the relatives, my brother, my mother, me, whoever was there, he didn't want us to cry. Especially he told me because he knew my mother would not be able to, to handle it and my brother probably also not, so he said it to me that uh, he doesn't want me to cry. So now the reason is, it's, it's something about to, to uh, understand first of all, when we have ceremonies like um, um, how you call it, when, when somebody passes away. Funeral? If a funeral. Mm. If we have funeral ceremonies, in our tradition, that ceremony is actually is not made for the relatives. Hmm. The ceremony, the rituals, they are done for the, for the person who just passed away. Because the idea is, the relatives, they are still alive. They actually only lost one person. But the person who just like passed away, he lost everything. Hmm. He lost the connection to all the members. He lost the connection to the earth. He lost the connection to the, his body. So the more difficult transition right now is not for the relatives. Mm. It's for the person who is just about to pass away or to go into transition. And the reason why transition is, now I speak in pictures. We have the body and we have the soul, we have the mind, we have the spirit. While alive, they might be still together. In transition phase, they start to separate. The, f the, the energy that fuels the body of functioning is starting to leave the body. That's why the body passes away. Mm. And this spirit, however you see it, 
still has memories into the surroundings. Still remembers the relatives. So when the spirit leaves and, he's, and the spirit sees everybody's crying, it makes it difficult for the spirit to continue the journey, mm. to go into next transition. Yes? And this type of thinking, even if you say, yeah, but we believe in a different culture, is not a problem. But for me, these are things that I trusted. There's no question for me. I trust it, and that's what also gave me, in a way, also hope, you might say, is not the end. Mm -hmm. The time has just come, the transition is taking place, and I wish the best for my father. And I know that everything that was in my hands, as, let's say, the son, I did everything that I could to make this transition as smooth as possible, and wherever my father or the essence of my father right now probably is, I feel it's a good place. And this is what makes it, in a way, also now easy for me mm. to cope with it. Did you follow his advice of not crying or you cried? No, I followed the advice. I didn't cry. No. Have you cried after? Wow. No. Probably should have at some point. Mm. I don't know. But honestly, not until now. Mm. Yeah, sometimes people call me cold hearted. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. When was the last time you cried? <laughs> it probably was still this year, the year of where we're recording this. Hmm. Tell me. You know, there are so many things coming together, you know. Coming together. Why I'm able, on the one side, I'm able to speak with you the way how we spoke today why we scratched upon some topics that before I didn't mention it in any conversations before. But it's time just to... I felt like if I, if I don't allow this transition to happen, I will get stuck. So, out of question, the transition must happen. This transition means that if you have spent 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, 36 years, however, whatever it is, if you build something up, if you invest your lifetime in something, even if it's not biological, it is something about being a child of yours. It is something about that carries your essence. But at the same time, it's just a realization right now. Uh, maybe the child must start to walk alone. Hmm. It's time to change the type of connection that you have to the child. Oh, and, and, and many of these things come together. Hmm. Yes, and therefore, letting go, like I said, this is uh, quite a big pain in a way. But you shouldn't teach what you can't do. So? You're doing. There's no way. You are in resistance. <laughs> and I sympathize because I feel, and I might be wrong, 
that me and you come from a very controlling background in terms of controlling for excellence, controlling to achieve, controlling to do our best, controlling because we feel responsible. And when we meet certain things that teach us that life is bigger than us, we're not usually used to this because we're like, okay, but how can I control this? And sometimes life will really hit you hard to tell you, relax, you're this small, you're nothing, I have much more surprises for you. And I find it very powerful for people like me and you, Shifu, that are generally control freaks to learn when to surrender to the higher. Now, whether that is for your next chapter and the next few years, whether it's you choose to change uh, careers, whether it's teachings, whether it's a family and love, whatever it happens, whether it's how you will grieve your father. Some people grieve after three, five years, suddenly they cry and they don't know why they're crying. And it doesn't even have to be crying, it could be you take that sorrow and you put it into something, you build something. So that's all resistance, you know, this fight, internal fight. But when you reach surrender, it will liberate you. You're a new butterfly. You know, I think so. <laughs> this is too good. You know, this is too good. Appreciate it very much. Why do you say that? I think nobody would ever understand, but... It couldn't have been more fitting, what you just said right now. Really, absolutely not. I don't know how else to say. The words you used, the topic itself you mentioned, that is, that's exactly what it's about. I built myself strong 36 years. I built strong shields in order to take blows, in order to take whatever. But everything has two sides. Something's getting really hard, impossible to penetrate. But it's not always good. Mm. Yeah. So, surrender is, is, is the opposite of what you actually want if you go into battle. You don't want to surrender. But sometimes, maybe it's the better choice. Mm. And now, like, having spent so many years the hard way, maybe I feel, yeah, there's something to it, to find the proper balance. Mm. Because elsewise, it doesn't feel right. Yes. You know, I also recently, Shifu, I, uh, I went through small experiences, small details in life. Like, small, but grand. I'll give you one. And it was a few of those. The other day, I was walking in the mall with my brother and two of my sons. Uh, two sons, I only have two. Um, and Majid, my son, said, Baba, which brand do you like these days for clothes? Because he knows I like clothes. So I'm like, you know, that brand before we go to the parking is that one. So in a second, I thought, let me just... So I made a decision, let's go through, since he brought it up, I'm like, uh, let me see, maybe I'll find something. So I went, I literally spent 60 seconds. It's a small shop, so I did a quick round, didn't, nothing caught my eye. And Shifu, by the time I stepped out of the door, there was a guy walking, like, it was like this. So he sees me coming out of there and goes, <gasps> and I'm like, hey, and he goes, you? I'm like, yeah, and he goes, you don't know what you've done to my life. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, my father passed away during COVID. 
And he's like, I was really down on this. And he's like, I just kept eating up your show and you don't know how much I needed that at that moment. And I always knew I'd meet you somehow. And you just popped in front of me. I'm like, well, hi, here I am. And I was thinking, if I did anything different in that day, even 10 more seconds in that shop that I found something, I would have never stepped out of the shop at that specific moment. So I've had a few of those in the last two months. And I'm starting to really, I really believe things are by design, not coincidence. <laughs> so this is not a coincidence for me. No, it's not. It's by design. It's what I need from you and what you need from me for us to go tomorrow and start that next thing. That's why. Hmm. You just said why I, before you ask, why I said that. Exactly because of this. Hmm. It's impossible. The words that you spoke before, also like in regards to the butterfly, it's impossible for that, the chosen words to be a coincidence. Hmm. And I like it very much how you said it. The small things, but still huge. That's, that's what more and more popped up also in my realization, hmm. in my daily things, where, I mean, normally I come from, I was representing, I am representing a Buddhist monastery where it's not necessarily about belief, it's actually just about methods, practical methods, how to get more uh, clarity to the mind, more coming to the present moment. But religion, for me, I never, I kept it out. And these questions, where do we come from, or what do you believe in, or who's the creator, or what's the creator, um, I still think it is something personal, that's why I do not interfere in this. But for me, in the way of how I started seeing things coming up in my lifetime, mm -hmm. especially within the last five years, I come to the conclusion um, there's something you can do about your life and there is something you have no influence on. And this is where there's no other way for me to have trust as a fundamental basis of knowing the ultimate essence is a true essence, a good essence, mm -hmm. which just tries to, yes, you meet. And why do you meet? Because maybe there's a lesson to learn from each and every one. Mm -hmm. And what the one has, you may be not yet, and so the exchange starts. And all with the one purpose, probably. To bring out the best version and best potential about what you can become. I think this is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Final two. Hypothetically, if I can take Shifu, your heart, and I can place it in front of you, what would your heart tell you? You should have opened me up earlier. Why? Because I think this is where the essence flows through. Hmm. Your whole being. You do it with your heart, or better, you don't do it at all. Hmm. You do it with your heart, chances are super high, it's fulfilling. Nothing to look for. Hmm. 
You do it by thinking, you do it because of rational decision, without the heart being involved. It's okay to a certain extent, but you're going to reach the limit. Mm. You know? Your life's going to be functional, <laughs> it's not going to be fulfilling. And so the, the message in a way is really whatever you do, it's good to integrate the heart to integrate and ask what is the underlying feeling hmm. in your average day. You know, I'm not saying always follow your heart, it's not what I said. I just said integrate the feeling of the heart into your decisions. Well, I guess it doesn't matter if you didn't open it before anymore, but you can choose to now. Yes. All in its time. I believe in timing. Maybe now's the time. You don't need to open it too much. One centimeter is okay. Start with one. <laughs> no, we're not being too generous and greedy. <laughs> um, final question. Shifu in one word. Shifu in one word. serving. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. good. It's one of our long ones. Nice. Nearly three hours. Nice. Yeah. How was it for you? Very appreciated. So I don't even know what to say at the moment. Mm. You shocked me meanwhile. Was In good? between. Yeah, yeah. I hope a good shock. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all for your patience. No, really awesome. Really happy about the conversation also. Same. I was looking forward to it and I wasn't let down. It's a very stoic one, you know, like we're like both <laughs> like this. <laughs> Just like shh. Philosophies. And you see, the problem is also sometimes, Shifu, some people have a lot of philosophies, but it's like, no you don't know how, like it's nice to hear because it's a beautiful word, they're eloquent, but then you're like, how can I implement it? Mm -hmm. But then I think a lot of our conversations, like you would, you're the type that you would go, but you'd come back. It's not like go and then I will forget and you forget and we move to the next nice word. So a lot of it for me was like, okay, I am thinking also of the audience. Mm -hmm. Ah, grief. Ah, okay. How do they deal? Ah, negative thoughts. How do they do that? So I was happy that you know we were we were in tune. Yeah, I also think so. <laughs> <laughs>